with Republican Congressman Ken Buck of Colorado. Congressman, thanks for taking the time today. Thank you. So you heard uh, the speaker say to my colleague Mano Raja there that he is not at all concerned about any potential threat to his leadership following this agreement, which you oppose. Should he be concerned? Yeah, I think he should be concerned. I'm not suggesting that the, the votes are there to remove the speaker, but uh, the, the speaker promised that we would operate at 2022 appropriations levels when he got the support to be speaker. He's now changed that to 2023 levels plus 1%. That's a, that's a, a major change for a lot of people. And so I, after this vote, and he will win the vote tonight, but after this vote, we will have discussions uh, about whether there should be a motion to vacate or not. You say, though, that there are not the votes. If you raise that motion to vacate, are you saying there's not the votes there to, to take him out of the speakership? Well, it only requires five votes if the, if the Democrats all vote uh, for Hakeem Jeffries. It only requires five votes for, for Kevin McCarthy not to get elected. Um, what I'm saying is that we don't have a majority of Republicans to vote for somebody else at this point in time. Understood. Okay, let's talk about McCarthy's claims about this particular agreement. He just described it as the largest or the cut ever. It appears that he's basing that on the two years required cuts lasting beyond that. Uh, is he misconstruing the, the actual cuts in this bill? It's absolutely smoke and mirrors. The, the truth is that any uh, deal that is made right now on cuts can be waived by Congress in this year's appropriation bills, next year's appropriations bills, and certainly a future Congress. So all of those are targets, um, and they will be targets that would be um, cuts, but they are not, uh, they are, they are not cuts uh, in actual dollars right now. What is uh, absolutely true is that we will have a historically high deficit four trillion dollars more at least uh, than we have right now. As you know, there is a normal budget process when, when Congress votes on bu budgets. Here, here is a case again. Congress passes the spending and then as the debt limit approaches, that is where you have debates like we've seen these last several weeks here. Why not, if you want to cut the budget, why not do that during the budget process as opposed to the debt ceiling debate when you have genuine fears about the effects, not just of, of actually going over that cliff, but even discussing going over that cliff and the damage that does the economy. Well, there is a relationship between spending and debt. The more you spend, the more debt you have. If, if revenue remains uh, constant, and in this case, revenue is, is looking like it will remain constant, maybe decrease a little bit if we have a recession, but, but certainly there's a relationship there. And to be able to use the debt ceiling as leverage to reduce spending makes, makes all the sense in the world. Even with the potential cost of the economy, as you know, the rating agencies were looking at this, uh, you know, even days before we reached that cliff point and saying, you know, we got to reconsider the standing, the, the, the confidence in effect in U.S. debt. Well, there, there should be a lack of confidence in U.S. debt because at some point in time we're going to default. If we don't get our, our hands around this situation, we are going to default. It, it isn't going to be in, in June of 2023, but I'm not saying it won't be in 2027 or 2030. This country cannot continue to add four, five, six trillion dollars of debt every year, two years, three years um, without a default. So, uh, no, we're not going to default, and, and the credit uh, agencies are going to be able to take into account where we are financially. But uh, if we don't turn this ship around, there will be a default in this country. Finally, before we go, just to be clear here, you, you say that McCarthy has the votes to pass, McCarthy and the Democrats, we should say, have the votes to pass this uh, and move forward. After that point, due to your opposition to this, will there be a motion to vacate? I don't know the answer to that. I know there will be discussions uh, starting next week. I don't know. Um, a lot of it depends on how big the margin is for this vote. But certainly you can't call this an historic victory if you're relying on large numbers of Democrats to come over and vote for this. Congressman Ken Buck, Republican from Colorado, thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you. Boris. Another major headline we are following this afternoon. Tensions between the United States and China are soaring 